Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 20 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to step back into the web design and programming tutorial, obviously, which is an overview of all the languages needed to design robust web applications. And you can see a link to the previous video to this one on the left side of your screen. And on the right side of your screen, you can see the link to the PHP security tutorial, which I was working on prior to this, which I will most definitely be getting back to very soon. But today we're going to talk about how to create cookies and sessions. And I'm also briefly going to talk about the server global variable because it's kind of important in regards to security. But first on to cookies. On the left side, you see I just have some junk HTML. Well, if you want to set a cookie, which is just a variable that you want to store on the computer of the client that visits your website, what you do, you have to always do this ahead of all of your HTML code, unless output buffering is on. But I'm not going to get into out output buffering today. That's for a later tutorial. So just think this always has to be done first. So we're going to define ourselves a cookie and how we do it is call the set cookie function and then we're going to pass the name that we want to assign to our cookie and then we want to pass a value that we want to store in the cookie and you can store any value that you want and then you have to define exactly how long this cookie is going to survive and you can do that with the time function. This is a definition of the life of the cookie based off of seconds. Well time's going to get you your current time and then what you have to do is just come in here and calculate how long we want this to survive. So let's say that we want this to survive for exactly one week. Well what we would do is put a 60 in here because there's 60 seconds in a minute and then we would put another 60 in here because there are 60 minutes in an hour and then we would put a 24 in there because there's 24 hours in a day and then we would put a seven because there's seven days in a week. So that would make this survive for exactly one week. And yes, this is a very common way to define how long it should exist. And there are a bunch of other things that we can also define inside of here, inside of this cookie. For example, we could also define a path on the server that would allow us to access this cookie. So let's say we want to restrict access to the value of this cookie to only scripts on our server. Well, what we would do is put exactly what I have here on the screen, forward slash surrounded by quotes, but then if we want this to actually make any sense, we have to define the domain that we want to be able to access the values of these cookies. And this also has to be in quotes. And let's say that I just want this data to be available to my website. That's exactly what I would do. Of course, it would all be separated with commas. And if I would want this to be available to any subdomains of my website, I would put a period before that. And of course, if I don't want any restrictions, then I would not put anything there. Another thing is you can define that you only want this value to be transmitted on secure HTTPS connections. So I'm going to get more into that later. If that's true, you want to put true inside of here. And also, if you want to restrict access to this information so that JavaScript files or any scripting languages won't be able to get a hold of this, you would come in here and type HTTP only followed by the value of true. So those are all the different values that you can set inside of this guy. But we're just going to simply put in what we got here. And of course, all those values can be set by a hacker. So none of that's secure. And in no way are you really securing yourself by doing any of that stuff. So what we did was we created a cookie called cookie var, gave it a value of 100, and said that we want it to exist for a week. Now we're going to come in here, save as, and I'm going to jump into my web server. And I'm going to give this the name of create cookie. PHP and save it. And if I come over here and run it, you can see that there's nothing displayed on the screen. That's because I didn't tell it to display anything on the screen. To display anything on the screen, I actually have to call for the value of that cookie. I'm going to show you how to do that here. Now I'm going to create a file that is going to go in here and access the value of this cookie. So I'm going to call this get the cookie. All right. Cookie Monster would love this. All right, so how you get the value that you stored previously in a cookie is, of course, define your PHP area. And of course, for security reasons, you would want to check that the cookie actually exists. And this, by the way, is a global way to access values that are stored in cookies. And then you just put in here cookie var because that's the name that we told it we wanted our cookie to be represented with. And then we're gonna come in here. And if that value is set, we're going to store the value in a variable. 
And I'm really doing this to show you exactly how to store the cookie in a variable, no other real reason. And then I'm going to echo out the screen, concatenate this onto the end, cookie. And then I'll put an else statement in here, right like that. And then close off my PHP scripting area. Now, if I file save this, and I'm going to call it get cookies PHP, and click save. And if I call that script, you can see that it shoots out the value. The cookie value is 100, and that's what I set it to before. And that's pretty much all there is to know about cookies except for how to delete them. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and create another PHP scripting area. Remember, if I'm changing the cookie, I have to call that before I do anything else. And one way to delete the value is to just come in and give it a value of zero. And another way to do it is, let's say I want to put in the absolute opposite expiration date that I put in before. I'm just going to put time inside of here, followed by 60 times 60 times 24 times 7, close that off, followed by a semicolon, and then let's close off our PHP scripting area. And if we file save that, jump over here, we're actually going to have to reload this twice, and you can see no value found. And the reason that popped up there is because of what I have right here. And that's pretty much what you need to know about cookies, except for sessions. And a session is a file that's stored on the web server, and we figure out which session belongs to which user by setting a cookie. And of course, we want that ID stored in the cookie to be as complicated as possible and not easily guessed. And there's actually a function called session start that does that for you. And I'm going to get more into how to hack sessions in a later tutorial. Here, I'm just simply going to show you how to create a session. So I'm going to come in here and go file new. And this is just a basic text editing tool. There's nothing fancy at all about this. It's called Text Wrangler. You can use any other tool you want. And I'm going to give this the title, Create a Session. And then again, just like with cookies, if you want to create a session, you have to do it before any other HTML code. So I'm going to come in here, open this guy up. And what session start does is it will either go in and look for an appropriate session ID. And if one does not exist, it will create one. And there you go. That's all you need to do to create that. Now I'm going to jump down into the body section. And if I want to set a value for this session, you can create as many as you want, unlike with cookies where you have a 20 maximum cookie limit with sessions, you can create as many as you want. Because why? They're stored on the server. So let's say I wanted to store my first name right like that. That's exactly how I would do it. Close off that PHP. And then we're going to open up another one. Echo, hello, session, right like that. Jump over here. And then let's save this as create session.php, right like that. Now let's jump over here. And you can see that it pulled that value out. And that is the simplicity that is sessions. And I'm going to get into a lot of the more complicated things whenever we start talking about how to hack sessions in my upcoming PHP security tutorial. But there are a bunch of other things, other global variables. And the last one I'm going to talk about is the server global variable. And some of the tricky little bits of information that you'd be able to get from it. And we're just going to come in here, click Echo, and I'm going to show you how to get the server address. Since I'm on local host, this isn't going to be all that exciting. All this information is stored. For the most part, anytime information is passed, then I'm going to actually copy this guy, and I'm going to show you kind of six little neat things. Say so I want the server name, all of the server software, which would be very helpful to a computer hacker to know what he was working with in regards to the web server being used and any modules attached to that guy. HTTP host, which often contains a lot of interesting header content. Sometimes you can find out which website the person was on prior to coming to your web address. And also you can get the client IP address, which is also kind of interesting if you want to fight against hackers. So here we're going to get the server address. We want the server name. Let me just come in here and type name in instead. We want to find out what software is being used, meaning the web server and any modules attached to it. HTTP underscore host. Might get me some header information. Might tell me what website they came from before they came to see me. And is going to show me the IP address for the location of the person that's currently looking at my website. And if I save that and jump over here, you can see all the information we're able to get. This is localhost, that's why server address is shown as one here. Otherwise, it would show the server address for the site that I'm currently on. 
again, server name, local host. You can see all the interesting information it was able to gather in regards to the web server as well as the modules attached to it. So if they wanted to attack in different languages, this pretty much tells them exactly how to do it. And some security information. Again, local host. Here there is nothing defined and the reason why is the web website that I came from to come to this one did not pass this information along. That is something, the only way you're going to get it is if they pass that information along. And for the most part, most websites don't do it. But it's still neat information, that's why I put it on there. And then you can see here the client IP address, which is also one, which is the same as this. And remember, this would be the client IP address for the person who's visiting your website. So, hope that is helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.